Good morning, dear friends. What a joy. What a joy it is to see you this morning. I hope everything's working fine with you. Christ is still on the throne with the Father, and Christ still lives in human beings on this earth as his agents to carry out God's purpose on this earth. And the joy of the Lord fills our heart. It's just a wonderful thing to know Jesus. I Think about that little song every once in a while. I have the joy, joy, joy down in my heart, down in my soul. I just have all these wonderful things working for me, and I just believe that as you let the Lord move in your life, you're going to have the joy, joy, joy of the Lord. Praise God for that. We've been talking in these morning sessions about the new creature in Christ, and I, I want to finish that verse if I can. I'll get it done. This week, I'm on the air with you here uh, every morning, Monday through Friday. We'll take Saturday and Sunday off, but I hope that you make it a habit of tuning in and getting what little I have to say in these morning sessions, these, these sessions where we talk about uh, Christ and, and who He is to us and in us. And so we're, we're talking about the verse of Scripture in Second Corinthians 5 and 17, one of the most popular verses, I guess, in the whole of the Bible. But we've reached the point to where we have come to the new creature. The first line of that says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. How are you a new creature? By the changes that have taken place in your life? No. Because you decided to do things better? No. Are you a new creature because you didn't used to go to church and now you go to church regularly? No. You didn't used to read the Bible and so you read it now. No. That's not what a new creature is. A new creature is one who has the Christ life. Whenever I started this preaching many years ago, I had my first revelation of Christ as my life and 1960, and I was pastoring a church at that time, and uh, when I had this revelation, it came to me that if Paul says I no longer live, then who did he live? He lived the Christ life, and so way back then, we termed this message the Christ life, and I've written many books on it, and uh, we had magazines on it. We've done a lot of things to tell the story. All in the name of the Christ life. Because you see, that's what a Christian is. A Christian is one who has Christ life in him. It isn't something that you just do once in a while. It's something you are. i got to get that across to you. You are a Christian. You're not becoming one. You are that because Christ lives in you. A Christ person is a Christian. Christ lives in you. And so I've reached that point in this uh, verse of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where it says, If any man be in Christ, he, that man, is a new creature. Well, how is he a new creature? Because of where he lives, because of where he abides, because of how he is attached to Jesus Christ. He is a new creature. A new creature. That's what you are. You're not that old person. You're a new creature. I love to talk about our newness of life. Newness of life. You know how many people live? They live daily. Christians live daily trying to get out of their mind their old way of living. You see it? You understand that? They try to get out of their mind their old way of living. And I'm sure they ask God to help them. Oh, God, I don't want those thoughts anymore. God, I don't want to think about that man anymore. I don't want to think about that woman anymore. I don't want to think about what they did to me, Lord. I just don't want to think about it. The moment you accepted Jesus, you had a new life. That new life is Christ. 
It isn't you, it's Christ. But what didn't happen when you got saved was a change of mind. Your mind didn't change. I want you to understand that. Your soulish part didn't change. Now, it's an Old Testament saying to get the soul saved. It's not a grace statement. The soul doesn't get saved. The soul is in the process. That's where the process of Christianity is. That's where the process of Christian growth is. That's where the process of daily living in Christ takes place, in your soul. That's where you make the choices, the decisions, and so forth of life. Those are in your soul. But in your spirit, you were perfect. When you were joined to the Lord, he that is joined to the Lord, Paul would say, is one spirit. That's perfect. That isn't growing. That is. That's not becoming better. That is. It's your soul that you're working on. Some people say, I'm trying to get it saved. And I found a couple of verses in the Bible where getting saved in your soul is a long, drawn-out process. Why? Because God lets you deal with who you are in the flesh. And that's where you make your decisions. That's where you love is in your flesh. Love God more. Christ said, lovest thou me more than the things of the world. So the new life is not you made better, it's Christ in you. When you got saved, God wiped out the past. He let you start out. How? As a babe. As a babe. You were a little babe in Christ. That's the way you started out. You started out with a new life in Christ. You're a new creature. You're not a going to be creature. You are a new creature right now. Right now you're in Christ and you're a new creature. You're wrestling with things that the cross has already taken care of. But the one thing that wasn't taken care of was the mind. The mind. The mind didn't get saved like your spirit did. Your mind still controls you until you give it to Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let that mind get that. You have the possibility of getting the very mind of Christ. That's the Christian walk. That's the daily living. That's what's going to take some time, getting the mind of Christ. That doesn't operate your spirit, however. That doesn't tell you you're saved or not saved. That's a part of you that shows love. I'll deal with this on these morning sessions with you. Listen to me. You are growing up in Christ. He's already there. You need to grow into Him. My purpose of coming to you is to help you See that you need to grow into the Christ that's there. You've got it. You've got him. He lives in you. But you just haven't grown into it yet. you got to grow into it. Growing into it is what makes you a Christian. A real Christian. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now let's go to the next three or four words in that verse. The next uh, three or four words say, Old things are passed away. Now that's what I've been talking to you about this morning. Old things are passing away. They are passed away. Notice it's a word, past. They're not passing, they are past. In other words, we hold things in our mind. Endlessly we hold things in our mind. Because we think that's what's controlling our Christianity. No, your Christianity is in your spirit. 
the daily way of living is in your choices, is in your love affair with the Lord. Old things are passed away. I used to be a counselor. I used to work in the Dallas Counseling Center. And I enjoyed talking to people, but the, the first thing I had to get over with most people was the simple fact that your past is gone. Oh, I just can't get rid of it. I just keep thinking about those things that happened to me. And so I'd spend most of my time trying to deal with their past. A Christian doesn't have a past. And if a Christian gets saved and keeps his past, it's because he doesn't know the scriptures that belong to him. He doesn't know what it is that guides and determines who he is. A bona fide Christian does not go by his past. Old things are passed away. You get those words, what solemn words they are. Who did they pass away from? God. Jesus. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps on dealing in your soulless part because He's caring for you. He's interested in you. And He wants you to let the old things that happened pass away. They have. They died on the cross, if you really want to know. They were in His body, and when His body died, your old past died with it. We have a little saying that says, whatever they once did, they'll do again. That means sinning. That means in your daily living. You may keep on doing some of those things. But listen to me, friends. To God they passed away. He has already put the remedy for your past inside of you. It's in Christ who forgets and moves you on. You grow up in Him. You, you come to a point that these old things that happen don't happen anymore. And you're living a new life in Christ. It's a new life you've picked up to live. It may not be some of the old things that leave you instantly but you don't need to struggle with them anymore. Old oh, things have passed away. Where'd they go? They went under the blood of Jesus Christ. They went into the death of Jesus Christ. They were in His body. He bore in His body our sins and transgressions. Even the things you're doing that are wrong now, were in that body 2,000 years ago, and when he died, they died also. It's that you don't know it. You don't understand it. You haven't sought the forgiveness of those and moved on. You haven't grown up in Christ. Christ is not out there somewhere. Christ is in you. He's right there in you now. I want you to get a hold of that, because that's the essence of what I have to say. Christ lives in you now. Now, there are many things that will help you to lose your mind, your old mind. Many things will help you. I've written several books that will help you. Go to our bookstore. Maybe something there will help you. But most of all, get in these scriptures. Go to Paul's message. He's the only one who dealt with the mind as it should have been dealt with, the mind that passed by the death of Christ. Read him. Study these things. Let these things take a hold in you, and you'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. i got to move on because my time is up for this morning. But it's been a joy being with you. I tell you, I can see some of you out there right now who are wrestling over your past. Let the blood cover it. It did at the cross. Let Jesus enthuse you and f flow through you. That'll make you forget it. You're a new creature. We'll come back to this same thing 
on tomorrow's broadcast, and I hope you listen. God love you, and have a blessed holy day in Christ.